Welcome to the Editor's Note Comics Podcast. Nobody's walking out on this fun old-fashioned family Christmas. No, no, we're all in this together. Central Maine's best comics podcast, by default. Fragile. It must be Italian. Here are your hosts, Zach and Jared. I didn't know you had elves working here. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to, I guess, our real final holiday-themed episode, because next week is Star Wars. Yes. Yes! Maybe. What do you mean, maybe? I'm sure I'm, I am looking forward to the movie, but I did my rewatch in pretty quick succession. Yes. Like, really just crammed it in. zippity doo da. Yeah, over a pretty quick, short period of time, and I gotta tell you, I'm pretty sick of Star Wars right now. <laughs> yeah, that, That's my fine. own fault. Yeah, once I sit down in the theater and they're just like, Bow! I'll be back in. Yes. Oh, when the music hits. <laughs> that, that'll that'll be good. But yeah, as of this exact moment in time, I'm a little burned out on Star Wars. Well, 24 hours from now, you're going to be all on a Star Wars high. I know, but I can't wait to get in just to a bunch of Star Wars news. Well, I know there's a lot of it, isn't there? There, There is a chunk. Nice. But what are we doing this week? We're going to do pop culture news. And boy, is there a lot of Star Wars news in there. This week in comics history, sports, a really good Christmas story, and more Star Wars. Your questions with Star Wars. <laughs> so much Star Wars. All of the Star Wars. Going to take a break from Star Wars until I guess the next episode of The Mandalorian comes out, then I'm back in. Ah, uh, The Mandalorian has been great. Or the next comic. They're pumping those out, too. They are. Which, uh, by the way, read uh, it's just started this week, The Rise of Kylo Ren, kind of explaining that whole what the Knights of Ren are, kind of what also happened when Luke uh, was maybe or maybe not going to attack him. It, it, only one, is, one out of four is out. It's really solid. It gives you a lot, so I recommend buying that. But before we do anything, I guess we're going to hop into our current weekly segment, The Mando Minute, except this time it's the Double Mando Minute because Mandalorian came out a few days early. Or The Mando Minutes. Because... I'm sure it didn't want to conflict with the movie release. Probably. Yeah. Mando Minute number one. He goes with a team of bounty hunters to save one of those guys with big tentacles on their head. Yes. And Bill Burr is there. Yeah, I thought it was a fun episode. It was a nice like, kind of prison break episode. I also really like um, uh, Mark Boone. He was in that. Yeah. Yeah, he's a um, he's always a fun guy when he shows up. Yeah. And when I was looking at the cast, I was like, I wonder who the big guy was. I was like, Clancy Brown. I'm like, that. Eh, of course it was Clancy. Oh, Clan- yeah, that was Clancy Brown. Ah, of course it was Clancy Brown. I'm like, eh, it makes a lot of sense. Yes. Because it's always Clancy Brown. <laughs> it always, always is. How much longer can he be the big guy running around in prosthetics? It can't be that much longer. I don't know. Good question. Five years, ten years, maybe the ten, but that seems like a lot. Over- I liked the episode, but I can't not see Bill Burr as just Bill Burr. I'm like, oh, Bill Burr, stand-up comedian Bill Burr. I like his stuff. Yeah, there's a there's been a lot of good cameos in all of these Mandalorians. Well, I love funny. it. Um, a couple of years on Conan, he was on, and he was saying how much he hated Star Wars. Yeah, which is fine. You don't have to like Star Wars to be a part of Star Wars. Exactly. It, it was just kind of a funny bit. He's like, I missed it when I was a kid. Like, I didn't see it the summer it came out, and when I came back, it was you know everyone had seen it, and you couldn't see reruns, so it was kind of done. And then he didn't see it till like he was in his twenties, and he didn't care. Well, I mean, the other piece to that, I totally, I had it, and I just lost my train of thought. Wow. Oh, no, the fan service. He like kind of plays a snarky fan in that in some ways. I like how they're like, um, he was an Imperial sharpshooter in Boba Fett, or not Boba Fett. The Mandalorian's like, he's like, I wasn't a stormtrooper! Yeah, smartass. <laughs> like, that kind of snarky fan service. Like, I liked that a lot. It was a fun episode. Uh, a couple cameos in there. Dave Filoni. He dropped, yeah, Bill Burr dropped Baby Yoda, by the way. I don't remember specifically. When they were in the ship and it gets rocked by the... Oh, there's a lot of rocking on that ship. Yeah, those get those three are going to come back to haunt the Mando at some point, though. Probably. He probably just should have killed them. Like, he killed so many people who were like, you threatened my life. He just killed them indiscriminately. And then these three, he's like... This is the I, I way. Need, I need you to come back yeah. for how another people, episode. How many people did he end up killing by bringing the uh, transponder back and having the... That's where the New Dave, Republic. Dave Filoni, the guy behind the animated stuff, also uh, co-executive producer on this with Favreau, he was one of the pilots, along with the director of that episode, not even going to try and pronounce his name, but he was one of the like 87 directors who was up for The Flash at one point. Yeah. So then Mando Minute 2. I forgot to write down all those DC release dates. Like A lot of stuff's coming out, including The Flash, All right. apparently. There you go. New segment over for that. Mando Minute number two. This is the All is Lost episode. Oh, also, yeah. we're back to the Mandalorian's a buffoon. Yes. <laughs> He's such a buffoon. 
he's back to like getting in trouble and needing someone to bail him out. But it's the penultimate episode of the season, so you have to have that cliffhanger climax. I don't think it, no, I think they're doing ten. I this thought it's was, eight. I thought it was an eight season. Eight. I, thought, I thought it was ten. Oh, I don't know. Let me Google it real quick. You know, I, I liked getting all those cast members back who are also always going to come back. I was surprised. Except I, for one. Spoilers. There was one that I was surprised came back was Taika Waititi's IG character. The droid, yeah. Yeah, I figured, you know, once you got a bullet or a laser blast at the head, you were done. But yeah, droid, why not? Well, he got he got um, rewired. Is it strange to you how Nick Nolte sounds kind of normal in this? A little bit, yeah. He's just not off the edge. Like, oh yeah, that's right. Nick Nolte used to be a good actor. It only says up to eight, and guess who's directing? Oh, okay. Guess who's directing episode eight? Probably Favreau. Nope. Take away TD. Oh, good. That'll be fun. Yes, but, but I mean, there's also cast members that I kind of forgot were announced for the show come in. We get Giancarlo Esposito, who is, I guess, if you just want a terrifying, cool bad guy, that's who you get. Moff Gideon. If that's, I, don't I think know so. Real name. Uh, I'm just gonna call him Giancarlo Esposito. Yes. That's a cooler name. Or if you want to go Gus Fring. Or John, is it Giancarlo or John? Giancarlo. Giancarlo. I mean, I'm questioning myself, but I've heard is because I mean, mostly through every time there's like a Breaking Bad episode or a Better Call Saul episode, they do a podcast about it, like the creators and the writers and all that stuff. And I swear it's Giancarlo. Yeah, close enough. I'll, I accept it. But he's just the best bad guy. He, he he rocked up. I'm like, yes, of course. I forgot he was cast in this. Carl Weathers is a lot of fun. Gets the best line of the series. <laughs> I think so far, there's still time to make a better one, but damn, Carl Weathers is a lot of fun. Oh, he's great. It just reminds me of Rocky and those good old days. So let's just Mando. jump into the news. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? It's time for the news. Why is that my transition? Because Rocky's back, baby. Yeah, I saw this his Instagram post. Yeah. Stallone, he, yeah, he did a couple Instagram posts where he's in Rocky's clothes. He's in Philadelphia. He's outside the statue that's now outside the art museum, or out by the not on the steps, but by the side of the steps now. Yes, and he put he puts those clothes on. He can't not be Rocky. He stops being Sylvester Stallone. Oh yeah, he's got the hat on. He's yeah, like, it's like yeah. hey, come over here. I want to introduce you to a friend of mine. Like that's he's just being Rocky. That's Maybe just Rock. He is Rocky. He yeah. I mean, no one knows Rocky better than him. But he's like, we, you know, we got something fun to go see in a few months. I'm like, oh my god, what is it? And then it, it's just a Super Bowl commercial. Yeah, that's and that kind of bummed me out. I'm like, oh, it's like last year when they were doing the Big Lebowski and they got like Jeff Bridges. And people are like, what is this? Like, ah, it's just a Super Bowl commercial. Yeah, but still. And, the, and Chris Rock is gonna be in, and I'm like, I like Chris Rock, but I'm like, Chris Rock and Rocky are not the same thing. Is this gonna be a Rolling Rock commercial? Ooh, maybe no duels. I'll just say if we got Rocky and Chris Rock getting all the rocks in there could be does rolling rock have that much money does anyone drink rolling rock rolling rock's not that expensive i know but do they have enough money to do a super bowl commercial yeah sure everybody's got money to do a super bowl commercial i don't think that's true oh you don't no of course not i'm sure rolling rock has super bowl commercial money yeah so i got excited and then i was like oh okay yeah whatever uh the internet was broken this week Speaking of stand-up comedians, because I guess this is the week to talk about stand-up comedians and pop culture. Yeah. Kumail Nanjiani. Yeah. Did you not see these photos? I did not. Uh, he posted what his body looks like now. Just go to his Instagram. Just look up Kumail on Instagram or anything. Anything? Any Anything. This broke the internet. You know, not a, he's never been an out-of-shape guy, but... Kumail? How do you spell that? K-U-M-A-I-L. Oh, I think I see... Oh, Yeah. Yes, I saw this. <laughs> so yeah, so Kumail is just all of the muscles right now. Yes, you don't need to show me the photos. I've wow. seen them. Oh, but the, that's incredible. And I couldn't find it. It I think if I had to take my best guess, I think it was probably square jawed stud. When he was on Pete Holmes' podcast, you made it weird. This is probably where it came from. I couldn't find it in any of his stand-up stuff, but I specifically remember there being a thing he said you know, I, I do want to get in shape, but the only way that's ever going to happen is if I get cast in a superhero movie. Yes. Well, guess what, Kumail? It happened. Yes. And you're a beefcake now. What a Look at that vein in his friggin' arm. Well, I mean, that's one of those things. Oh, my God. He was, I mean, for those photos, he was def he definitely just drank like two bottles of water. It was lifting right before then to get, get some those pre workout. Veins. Man, the veins are just. That's from the lifting in the water. I guarantee he's he chugged. Got a pump. Holy shit. That's like a pipeline going. Wow. 
I guarantee that is you. a righteously veiny arm. Yeah, but I guarantee that's just from the water he just chugged. And doesn't quick matter, dude. That I know. Is, I know. He's still he's jacked. I wish I had half of that. I don't even have a vein that awesome. <laughs> it's like, oh, good. So he was already funnier than me and more successful than me. But also now he can beat me up. Let's do some good news. Let's let's just let's rock the good news. Picard, before season one is even kicked off, has been picked up for season two. Yes! I forgot that's coming out next month. Yeah, right? <laughs> my rewatch yes. on my rewatch on also terrible. My rewatch on that has been slow. <laughs> I am not gonna get through all seven seasons. No, probably not. Four movies. I'm on season two right now. <laughs> yeah, you got a, you've been on season two for a long time. Well, I mean, we've been watching other stuff too. It's not oh. just that. Well, it's bouncing season two is when like the end of season two is when it starts to get better. But yeah, I mean, as long as Patrick Stewart's able to do this, let's just keep rocking this because I want to see it all. They had the second issue of there's a three part comic coming out and the second issue happened this week, which is still good. It's moving the story forward. But the last one I was excited about because they were like, there's an old cast member. Oh, we're talking about the Enterprise. It's like, yeah, yeah. This one was just moving the that Picard's own story forward. I'm like, I miss the other stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't, I don't know, I'm still excited about this whole thing. Oh, I got big news today. Uh, big social media news. I'll save it for the end of the show, but don't let me forget. Okay. Here, here's one that no one saw coming. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 100 came out last week. Yeah, I saw you tweeting about this. Yeah, and it was announced that for the first time since 1993, Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird will be working together on a Ninja Turtles book. There's, they're going to be working with another writer, Tom Waltz, and the another artist, Andy Kuhn. There is literally nothing out there right now. What do you keep looking at over there? I'm just looking at your Ninja Turtle stuff. <laughs> like Something is, keeps catching your eye. Uh, I'm just looking at it. That's all. Yeah, there's some stuff over there. Okay. But, I mean, that's nuts. Also, I mean, Pete's been retired for a while. He, the last thing he put out was four years ago. And even that had been done for a while. He just didn't officially print it for any stretch of time. So, yeah, it was kind of massive news. I would think so. Yeah, it's really cool. I can't wait to see that. The two of them, they were on an episode of The Toys They Made, which I've only, that's the only episode I've seen. It was really good. But they got together in uh, Northampton, where the studio, Northampton, Massachusetts, where the studio is based out of. And they did two sketches. One of, they would both pencil to piece, and then they swapped and they inked each other's pieces. They're up for charity right now. Still like six days left. And right now they're like 1,500. Wow. Just for sketches <laughs> a piece. Like a little rich for my blood. And that's with six days left. Go charity. Yeah. They say give till it hurts. Well, I can't give that much. It hurts to give, right? Yeah. Three Jokers is almost done. This has been a series in the work, I don't know, for four years now, where it was revealed that there have been three different Jokers in the DC universe. What does it mean? I don't know. It's been four years. That's one Joker a year with some left over. Yeah. But according to the writer of the series, Jeff Johns, they're about to announce the solicitations because issue three is almost done and they were holding off until they knew they were actually going to be able to keep the schedule. Unlike Doomsday Clock, which ended this week, and I'm going to spoil just one piece of it. Go on. Because a ton happens. It totally reworks. The universe kind of streamlines everything. It all kind of makes sense. But then they also announce a bunch of stuff that's going to be happening in the future. And a lot of it might be wishful thinking. A lot of it could be real. But one of the random things that comes out of it... Also, it's an awesome ending. I was surprised how much I liked it. So that's good. But I think the big surprise out of there, they say, um, and in the future, Superman will fight Thor. I'm like, okay, he's fighting Thor. Thor's a kind of public domain thing. It's like, And a green behemoth that is stronger than even Doomsday. I'm like... I mean, the Hulk? Did they just announce another Marvel versus DC crossover? They may have. That's insane. Not since the 90s. Hey, they, man. The it, 90s are coming back. We read it. It wasn't good. I think there was a second one. I'm sure it's also bad. Yeah, it wasn't great. But it was just such a weird, random way to do it. Like, here's a Watchmen sequel. A Watchmen sequel that's announcing Marvel versus DC. Insane. And they even gave a year on it. I didn't write it down. I don't remember. But it was like four or five years out or something yeah so we'll see or maybe it was just them kind of like nudging marvel like hey you know we said we're up for it i don't know but that's kind of cool tarantino says he's maybe off of his star trek movie maybe it's not gonna happen probably not i want a tarantino star trek movie right that would have been i mean it still could happen but he sounds kind of tepid on it i want it now this just sounds like one of those weird things like he's a big fan of it wouldn't it be cool if 
Yeah. It sounds like we got kind of close, but the way he was talking about it, I mean, this already sounded like it was dead in the water before. Then it was kind of back, but now it sounds kind of dead again. We can only hope. And he's been saying forever that he's only doing 10 movies and he has one left. I still need to see um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That's out on Redbox now, so now I I think it's also streaming. Is it on a service where I don't have to pay Redbox? Uh, I can look and find out. It doesn't matter. <laughs> for... I'm excited for it, though. I know. I want to see it. It looks good. And the brand new adult animated Harley Quinn show is out on the DC streaming service. But if you want to get episode one, well, you can find that on YouTube. And I have no interest in the show. I also saw they released a clip where Wonder Woman is fighting someone and he calls her a What? And I'm like, yeah, that's just not what i'm really looking for what show is this again <laughs> a new harley quinn show that's aimed at adults oh the yeah the animated one i've heard that it's really adult yeah I, that doesn't really interest me and if that's the clip that you're releasing to like be enticing i'm like i get a lot of advertisements gonna, for it on like pass, youtube i'm gonna pass on this yeah i hear it's just we're gonna be edgy to be edgy and we're gonna say edgy things yeah that's also one of those words where a lot of times when i'm bleeping curses it's kind of a you know halfway attempt so you still know what it is this one's gonna, that's gonna be a full bleep yeah it has four letters <laughs> you know what it was yeah starts with c ends with three letters i think they figured it out okay well i'm just trying to be helpful and on the eve of star wars reviews are in mixed yeah they're mediocre right. i'm i'm excited i know right? i mean that doesn't mean anything it's not gonna really we're gonna go into it and hopefully enjoy it also might not but right now it um it's has the exact same rating that phantom menace had oh, that's not good <laughs> yeah but i don't know because i mean jj abrams he i like force awakens and i really like his first star trek movie but i don't particularly like his second star trek movie uh, so we'll see a couple of things i read about the star wars reviews was like it felt like there were some course corrections that weren't needed from last jedi yeah, I I didn't really dive deep. I've been trying to avoid spoilers. Yeah. I did a bad job. I saw two major ones that kind of pissed me off that I saw, but overall, oof, I'm going into this pretty clean. I'm pretty much going to shut my Twitter down tomorrow. Yeah, I don't I don't know much, which I I wish I knew less than I did, but I don't know much. It's nice but go. I know I love you. Weird. I'm glad I'm going in pretty clean to this one though. So my reaction is just going to be, you know, my reaction. Yeah. Which will be nice versus going into, like, I already know X, Y, Z, because I don't really know a ton. I'm just glad. I, I'm excited to go, and uh, I'm going Friday. You're going tomorrow. On th- you're going on Thursday. I'm going on Friday. Yeah, you just got to dodge those spoilers for an extra day. They're I gonna, can do it. They're going to hit hard that day, too. I can do it. Yeah, just don't go on Twitter. Exactly. you be fine. Yeah. Unless a kid in your school just ruins it. They won't. <laughs> They know better. It's like um, there's that great clip of The Simpsons when Homer and Marge are walking out of Empire Strikes Back. It's like, I can't believe that Darth Vader was Luke's father. Yes. <laughs> Something like that. I'm going to be walking into the theater and people are going to be like, I can't. I'm like, you shut your damn mouth. But that will do it for the news. From there, we're going to move on to This Week in Comics History. Superhero landing coming up. This Week in Comics History. We're not going back that far this time. It's a more recent week in comics history. Going back to 1967, Carol Danvers first appeared in Marvel Super Heroes number 13. Of course, would later become Miss Marvel and Captain Marvel and Binary. And I think those are the only three names she's gone by, aside from her birth name. So I guess four names. Yeah. Four whole names. She didn't start out with powers. Those would come later. In 1972, after DC sued the crap out of Fawcett Comics, bankrupting them and taking over their property. Captain Marvel, a different Captain Marvel, returned to the pages of comics, but this time under the name Shazam. And you guessed it, Shazam number one. I know, tough name to guess. I Sorry, I'm not smart. Well, let's see if you can get this one by context clues. 1978, we had the first appearance of a character, a legacy character. A legacy character refers to someone who has taken on the mantle of a previous character. Passed down from person to person. In Avengers number 181, this individual stole the costume of a different hero and then became said hero. He's I'm, probably a better version because he didn't beat his wife. Okay, so it rules out Captain America. Yeah. <laughs> stole the costume. Marvel or DC? Oh, you didn't see this movie. You didn't see the movie. You didn't read the comic. No, maybe I didn't see the movie. It's Ant-Man. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> I think that's the only movie you've missed of theirs. The first Ant-Man. Yeah. Yeah. What happened next? In 1981, in Spectacular Spider-Man number four, 
Peter Parker met a superhero duo who would tell you that doing drugs will give you superpowers. <laughs> Cloak and Dagger first appear. Oh, all right. Good for them. That's a great message. It's kind of the message. But in the Comics Code Authority, let this happen. I mean, it wasn't exactly. It was like signs and whatnot. But yeah, basically, oh. drugs will give you superpowers. And the Comics Code Authority was okay with this. Did anyone care by nineteen eighty one? No one cared by nineteen eighty one. You got to be impressed that I knew that. Yeah. You know what? I just watched this. I uh, rewatched. I haven't seen it in a number of years, and it kind of surprised me how crappy its message was. Nightmare Before Christmas. Really? You want to know what the theme of that movie is? What? Stay in your lane. Never change. Oh, I thought you were going to like say something <laughs> like Captain Planet or something. No. Oh, okay. No, it's just this, the season that was on Disney+. Plus. I'm like, I haven't seen this in years. And the whole point of that movie is never try new things. Yeah, that's fair. No matter what, because you will ruin it. Good theme. In 1982, Jason Todd first appeared as Robin of Batman 357, and he would be beloved. Everyone would love Jason as Robin. And that's why they killed him. Yeah, no one liked it. Someone must have. But every, I mean, all the stuff we hear, like, kind of in today is like, no one liked it. Someone must have, but maybe not. Batman liked him. Didn't like him enough to keep him alive. Wow. And then in 1990, a character who's fine in moderation first appeared in New Mutants number 98 with a book that in 2016 doubled in price overnight and now is kind of back to where it was. Really? Deadpool. Yay, Deadpool. Fine in moderation. Also, please, if you go to Comic-Con and you cosplay as Deadpool, or really for any character, don't do it in character. You're not that funny and you're not that quick. And you're just kind of annoying. People in character is insanity. Wow. I've just never seen anyone do it well. I'm sure there is an exception out there. I'm sure there's someone who's just Bill Burr and Kumail Nanjiani, like quick on their feet comedians who could do a Deadpool. But you know what? 99% of the world can't. So don't. Uh, this is in a very good um, review. Um, You're just looking up Star Wars reviews? No, I was looking up uh, the NHL standings. This popped up in my feed. Star Wars Rise of Skywalker is so bad, it made me wonder if I actually ever loved Star Wars in the first place. <laughs> Catchy headline. We'll see. I guess I'll, you know, form my own opinion. Yeah, you're going to have to. So from the Red Goblin to the Celtics halftime entertainment Red Panda. And it's not just, it's, she does more than just the Celtics. She's on a unicycle and she flips bowls. She was at the Red Claws game not that long ago. Good for her. I stand by from Red Goblin to Red Panda. It is time for Jared Sports Reports. He's running down the middle by the 50. He's at the 30. Bear tested. The guy is drunk, but there he goes. Oh, and they tackle him at the 40-yard line. It's time for another Jared Sports Report. Well, I don't have any updates in the world of unicycle plate spinners, but I can tell you this. The Boston Bruins have hit a little bit of a snag. They're 4-4-2 four, four, and two over their last 10. I haven't watched one of their games in a little bit. They still lead their division by 10 points, so they're leading the Sabres by quite a bit. But they've kind of struggled. They lost uh, their first home game just recently. Actually, mm. it would be Tuesday. It was an overtime loss to the uh, – no, was, they had a regulation loss somewhere along the line too. So uh, the Bruins kind of struggling just a little bit, but still midseason. they got to have a little bit of a slump, but they have pretty good commanding lead in their division. The Patriots have a big game, probably the biggest game in the AFC East history like last 10 years. Uh, well, maybe not the last 10 years, but certainly within the last seven or eight years where they are playing the Bills and the winner really gets the inside track to be the, the uh, winner of the division. Yeah, because they're, they're at a point now where teams are getting kind of cinched spots for the playoffs. Yep. Yeah, the winner really probably gets themselves closer to a first-round bye. I can't remember the last time the Bills had a bye in the playoffs. So I'm going to that game. I'm excited. I'll give you a report when I come back. I know. You're, I know you're excited. I'm very excited. You're excited to tailgate and maybe tailgate. watch football bills mafia <laughs> i can't wait to fight with some bills mafia members Don't fight anyone i'm not gonna fight anybody so uh that's going on let's see who's officially going to the playoffs what does that picture look like uh, i have to look at my phone i can't think of it <laughs> off the top of my head right now it looks like the ravens will be the one seed the afc the saints are up the up there the 49ers are in so it's still on track for a Patriots Saints Super Bowl, but probably really not going to happen. It's probably going to be like a uh, probably a Ravens Niners Super Bowl. Well, let me tell you all the dogs I have in that race. None. None. It'd be an entertaining game. Two, two good offenses, two good defenses. But <laughs> who am I going to cheer for? No one. Woo! The commercials. Rocky. No, I won't cheer for that. 
The Rocky commercial? I can't cheer for that. Why not? Because it's, I don't know. No. How about them Celtics? Um, it was kind of a slow week. They had an unprecedented five days off. <laughs> It's the, I don't think it's unprecedented. It is. It's unusual. Yes, it is. It's the longest break they have all season, aside from the All Star break. Yeah, but it doesn't mean it's. Uh, they've had five days off in the season before. Consecutive. I mean, most teams aren't getting that. Yeah, it's but weird. again, it's a weird thing. Again, I think you misused the word unprecedented. I don't think I did. I think it's very rare. But they make up for it with a really tough January. A lot of back to backs. Two straight. I mean, last week wasn't great. There were two losses, but they weren't bad losses. Who did they play last week? The 76ers, I remember, because Embiid decided he was going to destroy them. Charles Barkley and Shaq on Inside the NBA were telling him that he needed to try harder, and then he destroyed the Celtics and got on with them. He's like, thanks, guys. <laughs> Damn it, Shaq. Who else did they lose to? Oh, they lost to the Pacers. Pacers are a decent team, not a terrible thing. I mean, when the day we're recording, oh, I don't want to look at my phone because they're telling me the score. They're playing the Mavericks. Ah. A uh, Luka doncha list mavericks but hospital celtics are back everybody's out gordon hayward's out with left foot soreness unclear what that means robert williams is out for a while kind of indefinite with a hip injury backup center vincent poirier is out with a broken finger and marcus smart is out with a dual eye infection Ugh. unclear how long that's going to be it was supposed to be a seven to eight, ten day thing but then it spread to his second eye so <laughs> no idea what that means so it also means taco's gonna get called up Yay, Taco! But what's really going to make this interesting is so if Poirier's out and Robert Williams is out, that leaves them with Tyson Cantor, really. And you could have Ojale or Grant Williams play a small ball five. But on Christmas, they're going to Toronto, and it's unclear if Cantor is going to be able to travel with them or not because of his international arrest warrant from Turkey. <laughs> well, then that's... So they might only have one actual big in Tice. And like I said, I mean, they could put in Ojale or Grant Williams, but I think on Christmas there's a 90 percent chance you're gonna see taco on christmas well that would be a delight tacos for everyone on christmas <sighs> yeah it'd be, it'd be nice if canner could travel but if there's any chance of him you know getting arrested and deported back to turkey probably you know leave him behind yeah that would not be a good christmas present for him N no <laughs> no it wouldn't be but yeah i mean it, it wasn't a, it was a pretty slow week just because they barely played but you know we're back to our regular schedule now the sad five days off and four people are injured like oh my god don't what did you what did you do with yourself for all that time? Watch Star Wars. Oh, that's got, fair. Got sick of Star Wars. Misa Jar Jar Binks. I saw Ahmed Best was at the <laughs> premiere. George Lucas was not. Not surprised. Harrison Ford was there. Really? Yeah. But no Lucas. Do you think he's, he wouldn't want to be seen there? He's already He's done other ones. Yeah. He's uh, you know he's seen the movie a couple of times already. I don't know if he I'm sure he, he's he's probably seen it. I I know he hasn't been the biggest fan of these movies, so I don't know if he would sit through them more than once. Well, that's what you get for selling out. He sold his company for $4 billion to make sure that it, all of his employees kept on working. Yes. So I wouldn't call that selling out. Okay, maybe selling out was the wrong terminology, <laughs> but when you sold it, you kind of gave up. Yeah, that's how that works. Yeah. Although I feel like these are probably better than the movies he was going to make about the midichlorians. I don't know. You never know. You never know what could have been. Well, that's fair. Is there anything else exciting happening? I mean, so yeah, Patriots are playing the Bills. Any other big games this week? Um, or do you not even care? I don't really care. I've got <laughs> tunnel vision. Big important game. We have uh, venison burger, venison bacon burgers in the parking lot. Some sausage. You bringing down a grill? Oh yeah, absolutely. We're bringing down a grill. Cooler. Cooler with uh, hydration in it. <laughs> When was the last time you were at a game? Five years ago. Okay. Actually, five years ago today, it popped up in my memories. I'll show you the seats from what, that day. What was the game? Patriots-Dolphins. Who won? Patriots. Smoked them. So, yeah, Eli Manning came back for his victory lap Maybe game that was yesterday. the Dolphins. That may have been yesterday. Oh, yeah, here we go. Five years ago today. There we go. That was... Okay. Yeah. December 14th. Is today the 14th? Nope. That was a few days ago. So maybe... Yeah. So yeah, but 2014. Five years ago. Every five years I go. And you'll go in another five years when they're terrible because they'll be in a rebuilding phase. And the tickets will be way cheaper. <laughs> Probably. One every year isn't maybe it's Brady's last. Yes. Because there's no way he's there in five years. He, you don't know that. I feel pretty confident. Maybe he'll get one, the Eli Manning like you get one more game. Yeah. Is that it? That's sports? That's sports. That's all I got.
All right. So from there, we're going to move on to a Christmas tale. You've heard it before, but have you heard it like this? We are doing Batman Noel in a Jared's Reading Corner. It's Jared's Reading Corner. You know what I love? Christmas. You on your phone. I'm looking at something important. Okay, I'm done looking at it. Was it important? It was mostly important. <laughs> you know what I love? The Joker. A Christmas Carol. Yes. I love it. It has so many different versions. What story has been adapted more than a Christmas Carol? I'm sure there's probably an answer. I don't really care. Christmas Carol's been adapted a ton. Personal favorites, Mickey's Christmas Carol and Scrooged. Yes and yes. Those are good versions. Those two versions. Patrick Stewart does a good one. He there's does. a Muppets one. Yes. The Muppets one is probably one of my favorite ones. How many ghosts visit Scrooge? Three or eh, four, I guess. Four. Yeah. Ah, see, it's a trick question. Marley was dead already. Yes. Have you ever read it? Yeah. It's a fun little read. It's not very long, which is why it's easy to yeah, adapt it's a novella. <laughs> to read. Yeah. Look, you've seen Goofy fall down a flight of stairs with some chains wrapped around him, but have you ever seen Batman be Scrooge? Uh, yes, in Noel. Well, yes, now you have. And I mentioned this last week, but part of what's kind of funny about this one for me is a couple of years ago when I was writing on whatculture.com, I pulled a top 10 greatest Christmas comics of all time. And you left this one out. I, I just pulled it out of my ass. Yeah, and it's and evident I, and you I, left this out. I left this out. This one's awesome, and literally every single comment and message that was sent to me was, where's Batman Noel? And if I remember correctly, you got really indignant on the show about that. <laughs> you got super indignant. In, my- In fact, you created a segment called Irrational Internet Hate. It was fun reading comments that got mad at me. Yes. But... Yeah, to be, in, in my defense, I didn't know this existed <laughs> at the time when I wrote that article. Look, it's a Christmas Carol, but it's Batman. Yeah, and you, it's turned around because initially you get like this. You kind of know from the beginning that it's the narrator is the Joker, and he's kind of twisted. There's a guy named Bob. Bob Cratchit. Bob Cratchit. I can't pronounce the guy who did uh, the writing and the art of this. It's Lee bergemo or something close to that apologies i'm not pronouncing it right or even close to right uh he's famous for doing a the joker graphic novel also had a lot of controversy relatively recently when he drew batman's wang yes i remember we saw that yeah the same artist yes okay nice detailed painted work really a lot of a lot went into it yeah anyway but the art in this is beautiful i love the art it's very it does kind of have that christmas carol movie feel to it this is one i would love to see this i mean i most of the time i don't really care about animated stuff or adaptations but this one i think could be a lot of fun i don't know i i don't know if it would it would translate well it, it'd be pretty short but i mean i love what they do that they get a lot of the same lines in there like kind of the key lines i love the one of like instead of saying like the surplus population it's the surplus criminal element yes <laughs> that's a lot of fun the Ghost of Christmas Passes, Jason Todd. Yeah, that was a good one. That's so good. That's a great callback. And instead of like getting like three ghosts to kind of almost time travel, then we just get different Superheroes. characters. Superman is the Ghost of Christmas Present. Yeah, and just big positive guy showing him, you know, maybe he shouldn't be screaming at Bob Cratchit because he has a child. Yes, him who just keeps on threatening. He's like, I'm gonna beat the crap out of you and tim's like why also like i made a christmas tree out of cans from the trash at the end though does batman does bruce wayne hire him or does he like yeah i didn't know if he was already working for bruce no i think i i'm not positive because i mean they say that like scrooge said he had to come in the day after christmas but so i guess he was but i think yeah i guess he so he would have been but then, um, Batman well, no, he was working a, for the Joker, so jo- maybe it was like a double. Yeah, but then he got a four hundred one k. Yeah, he did benefits and a tree. Yes, and a Christmas goose and a new window. Well, I hope so. <laughs> Batman comes smashing through the window. But instead of like the time travel thing, you get just things happening kind of in the present, but people talking about different time periods. Like Catwoman is the ghost of Christmas past, and it's just talking about like the old days. Also, oh, this is Jared's reading court. I'm doing all the talking. But no, wait. Jason Todd was Ghost of Christmas Past. No, he was Marley. Oh, he's Marley. That's right. Yes. He's like, three ghosts will visit you. You hang up my costume like a weirdo. Yeah. He hangs up. He had all the retro costumes. 
Yeah, there was there was the original one. Also, um, like Batman in this is kind of vulnerable where he's sick. He's like kind of being shown as like humanish. But also, yeah. like, what has Jim Gordon done that like he would be arrested? Batman is harsh to Gordon. He's like that idiot. Yeah. Also, but there's like a like a when the Joker like car bombs him and drags him and talks about all the different things that are gonna happen without Batman. Like Jim Gordon was in handcuffs. Like, what was that all about? I don't know. It was the future. It's a bad future. It's not a good future for Jim Bat- Gordon. If Batman doesn't lighten the hell up. Yeah. Then everyone's going to become an extremist. Yeah. So the, maybe the Joker makes a good point and here. Like, so the so the Joker throws him in a grave and yeah, relax. He, he literally buries him. I love the description on the bat. Here's a bat who had no fun. <laughs> and no one loved him. Yes. <laughs> Harsh. So Jokerish. The Joker is fun because, I mean, then I also love kind of the premise of this book because it does... It does give you kind of the message of the a Christmas Carol, but I like that they twist it just a hair and kind of like make it feel a little more relevant. I'm not going to get the words exact, but it's like like the point of this is that you need to believe the people can change, like change to their core. Yes, and I like that they kind of spell that out. I'm like, yeah, I guess that is kind of the point, and that they're dealing with like different systems and kinds of belief and still still being christmassy and at the end we get bob cratchit who has a chance to kill the joker who just made some pretty awesome jokes about the board game clue yes he did <laughs> but instead of shooting him in the head batman's like no you need to be the hero and, the, and he lets the joker go and and batman takes the joker away and i'm surprised that nobody did any jingle bells batman smells i, I was just going through it in my head yeah. robin <laughs> laid an egg the well, bumblebee lost a wheel and joker got away well robin's dead in this well <laughs> yes <laughs> So yeah, he literally laid an egg. He's some larva inside of him laid an egg. Ooh, too soon. He's back. He's been back for like fifteen years. Who, Robin? Yeah. Jason Todd isn't. Well, not in this. No, he dead. But yeah, I mean, it's gorgeous, and I like the story, and I like the little twists on it. Yeah, I mean, you can tell right away that that's the Joker is the narrator. It's a great adaptation. This is a story that's had many, many great adaptations. Yes. I think of Christmas stories, I don't know if it's of all stories had the most adaptations, but of Christmas stories, it definitely has. Oh, it's certainly, yeah, there's a lot of... I guess unless you, you know, maybe the original Christmas story has had the most adaptations. That's got quite a few adaptations. But this is but, probably the second most adaptation. Well, it, just, it also speaks to how that the original Christmas story like stands up to time, and it's a classic. Oh, I meant Jesus. Yes, but also a Christmas that was, Carol. That's what I yeah. meant for the original one. <laughs> but no, the original Christmas Carol really does hold up very well. Yeah, it does. And I mean, it's had all these different adaptations. And I mean, they're not all good, but... Attaboy, Chuck. By the way, speaking of Christmas that. and adaptations, I watched uh, Charlie Brown Christmas the other night, uh, last night. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, Charlie Brown's friends are total assholes. <laughs> I watched that the other night, too. I'm like, I still don't like this. They are absolute dicks to Charlie Brown. And then here, look. So there's a lot of questions, more questions than answers from this one. But it's also I, I don't know. I have a sentimental place in my heart for it because it's Christmas. But still, the fact that they treat Charlie Brown like total sh. He tries. He's tried hard. He's doing his best. But then Snoopy wins like the costume, like the the house contest, the and house they decoration. Tear contest. it down. And then they, yeah, they vandalize it to fix Charlie Brown's tree. Those kids are they, they? They're terrible. Linus is kind of okay, but like everyone else, jerks absolute jerks I mean, lucy's fine because charlie brown's like i have clinical depression and she's like i'm gonna at least try and get you involved i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna take advantage of you monetarily <laughs> she's like i love the sound of cold hard nickels i'm like yeah that's about what i make too wow yeah but you don't have the psychiatric help sign above your door i just have a help sign <laughs> yeah i'm not looking for you know to pay the help no you take a salvation army kettle and put it in front of your door <laughs> for me yeah slap one of my stickers on it there you go but yeah batman noel what a good one i liked this one a lot i've never read it before you hadn't read it before no oh that's why i didn't make your list (laughs) i haven't read a lot of those either Uh, well that's all in the past yeah making crap up for listicles that paid me some money yeah so just like i tried to find the comments uh do you did you just get like two cents from me looking at your old, your old article no they only paid you for a month's worth of clicks oh well there you go but then they changed it to a flat rate i don't remember what that one was it was a long time ago oh. it's not i mean not that long but long enough that i don't remember yeah there you, there you go i uh, i don't know what do you think i think it's if you like batman and you like christmas it's a must read 
Yeah, this is definitely one of the better Christmas ones we've done. Um, Holiday Nights, the Bat- the animated series one that we did, that's right up there. I think it would be it would the be Michael good Angela for the one we did is right up there, and this is up there too. I think those are probably the ones that stand out for ones we've I bet done in the past. With the, the animated series, they could boil it down to an, a half hour episode. Yeah, I like that one that like ends with like Batman and Gordon just having uh, going to a diner. Yeah. at the end of it, I like that a lot. That was a good one. This is a good one too. I like it a yeah. lot. You should read it. There you go. Highly recommend it. That's what I said. It's a must read. All right. Moving on from that to your questions. Now for my favorite part of the show. What did I say? Talk to the audience. Oh, God. This is always dead. Here's another one of your letters to the editors. If you want to reach the show, you can do it. Editors note comics at gmail.com. Give us a question. We can answer. We'll answer it on the show. Yes. This week. Topical one. Uh, probably with star wars coming out what are some of your star wars theories all right are you ready oh i thought you were gonna pull out notes no because i actually gave you the question ahead of time they're all up here kylo ren dies yes he's gotta die but i think he dies in an act of redemption it's very vadery which i mean if this is jj doing it it could be real referency so maybe but i feel like he's just gotta die does he die saving ren or does ren kill him i mean uh uh, Ray. ray um I don't, I don't know. Also, he might not die. I'm saying that because here's where I think we're going. I think this is kind of the overall point of this and what we've been leading towards. Everyone, there's like the forces for everyone. I think we're leading towards balance because that's always been the thing. If there's some good, there's evil. When one pops up, another pops up. And there's always been this big back and forth, including in these movies. So, I I mean, I think that's literally what the rise of Skywalker is. And we've said this since... The title was announced that Skywalker is probably going to be a new form of Jedi. But I think the Jedi, like Luke said, need to go away. And I think we're going to get something that encapsulates balance. Does that mean they both need to live to make something new? Maybe. So here are a couple of theories I have. Either. But I kind of want him to die. I kind of feel like because I, I had seen a couple of reviews saying there was some fan service stuff that wasn't necessary. I feel like... I don't think balance is unnecessary, because that's no. kind of what everything's been building No, towards. but I, I have one of two theories about Rey. I think they're going to course correct a little bit about Rey's origin. Me She's, too. Uh, I hope they don't, but I wouldn't be surprised. So we're gonna, we, we have to find out. I think we get the answer as to where they got the Skywalker lightsaber from. So uh, they get Anakin's lightsaber. I don't, because we've probably heard that's going to show up in a comic. But here's, here's a theory, okay? Either Rey and Kylo are siblings, or... And hear me out on this. Ray is a Skywalker clone. Possibly. Uh, this is my Ray theory going into it. I think we're going to get something big, but something that still respects what happened in The Last Jedi. Yeah. I think we're going to um, have her be another immaculate birth, but from people who didn't want anything to do with the child. Yeah. That could work in both, because then she's still something big. She's a counter. Yeah. She's a counterpoint to what happened with Anakin. But it's, but versus like Anakin had a mother that still like loved him and tried to foster him versus these people were just like, the we didn't hell? Here's another theory I have. You know the line in the trailer, all the voices you've heard have been me? Oh, you saw that one? I wasn't going to bring that up. That one's so spoilery. That's He's talking to Ray. I don't think so, but I'll roll with it. I can, I'm not going to say that's a bad theory. He's. I think he's talking to Ray because he's trying to lure her to the dark side. I also feel like... The scene in the trailer where she extends that staff lightsaber, that's going to be Swiss in, Army knife. The Swiss, that's going to be in some sort of um, like you know how they had the Force Tree and the Force Hole. That's going to be another. <laughs> what else do you want me to call it? Sure, Force Hole. Okay, that's probably a bad name for it, but that's going to be a some sort of vision. That's not an actual. Yeah, I, I don't think that's probably. We're also going to get Luke practical. as a Force Ghost, and he's going to be far less whiny. He's going to be the Luke people wanted him to be. Yeah, I'm sure he's going to be all obi wan in this. Yes. I also think that there's going to be an Obi-Wan sighting. Could be. I'm totally on board for that one. Yes. I don't... Th- I think at the end, somebody's got to die. Either Kylo Ren, maybe Billy Dee Williams. Does I, Lando I, I, die? I, I am going to say confidently he doesn't die. Okay. Because they've already killed Luke. They've already killed Han. Obviously, there's the real life death of Carrie Fisher. I don't think you could then, on top of that, stack on Lando. I think we're out of deaths is this the episode that the millennium falcon finally gets destroyed oh you think it's gonna be like a star trek thing star trek 3 yeah oh my god what have i done get out of there 
That was my Christopher Lloyd. Yes. When it's blowing up. Not a great impression, but not terrible either. I feel like the Millennium Falcon has to survive this, right? Because it's a character in its own right. Yeah, but you can you can up stakes with blowing that up and not actually having to kill anyone. Yeah, but I mean, it wouldn't blow up till the end. I think we're going to see one of the best Star Wars space battles, but I, I think we're so. also going to see the best lightsaber fight we've ever seen. I was thinking about that. I questioned that. I mean, the best we've seen, I think, was in Last Jedi. But that wasn't like straight on lights. It was like lightsaber against other things. Still the best lightsaber fight, I think, is in episode three. Yes. Anakin and Obi-Wan? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the... No, it was the, it was the Darth um, Christopher Lee, whatever his name was. Oh, yeah. Count Dooku. Count Dooku. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't that one. It Those were like... It wasn't the one where he had an unnecessary flip over a banister. I totally... Yeah, that's the one that he had the... Uh, he jumped. Yeah, he's just like... And flipped it, yeah such a terrible cgi <laughs> it's like strange like you look back and you rewatch those those are so much kid movies compared to the first three flip except for where anakin i was when i was re-watching those you know what i and i know it's kind of like it's supposed to be more like showing just how evil he is yeah but boy he makes such a heel turn so fast he literally goes like a day and a half before maybe not even that long it might be like eight hours He's like, you can't kill Palpatine. He needs to stand trial. And then Palpatine's like, go kill Newt Gunray and those other... And some children. Yeah, but I'm like, okay, I could see him killing, you know, the aliens from episode one. Yeah. Then he gets back, he goes, all right, now go kill kids. And I'm like, that's a big leap. That escalated quickly. It's only been a few hours. Yeah, considering you're about to be a father. Like, definitely under 100 hours, and that is being real generous with that time frame. Yeah. Where he went from, you need, he needs to stand trial to, yeah, I'll kill a room full of kids. That's a leap. That's a big leap. Do you think we see Anakin Force Ghost? Maybe. I live in a solid maybe on that one, because there's concept art where they were toying around with it with episode seven and there's stuff that came back from that because originally there was some concept art of them going into the death star in that movie so we're seeing some recycled ideas so i think there's a good possibility i feel like we're gonna get a lot of payoffs in this like a lot of fan service payoffs my only question is could you get hayden christensen back he's seen i mean he came back for star wars celebration last year the year before money talks man but at the same time, Harrison I mean, Ford said he would never play Han Solo again. I suppose, but Harrison Ford didn't just get kicked into the dirt because of what he did. No, because Harrison Ford went on to, you know, well, everyone beat liked Indiana him. Jones. Everyone likes Harrison Ford in these movies. I think he's a little whiny in Empire, but that's not the point. Well, he's just trying to, you know, and he points a lot. He's he getting really his, points in that movie. He's trying to get his space thing on, you know, points so much. <laughs> it's just a pointy movie. He gets pointed at by the torture device. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if we got him back. I am comfortable saying there were definitely talks with him about it. You know, will they get him back? That is another story. I don't know. I'm going to. S- he seemed to be avoiding the prequels, though, for the most part. So I, I'm saying also, no. Also, here's an interesting thing. Think about this. Every time C-3PO says, thank the maker. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I think C-3PO does not make it to the movie. No, probably not. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean, boy, I mean, they were, or maybe he does, because that trailer was foreshadowing as all hell. Or maybe R2. Can't kill R2. Sure you can. He's been shot so many times. Leave him alone. <laughs> yeah, one of the two droids doesn't make it. What, because now they're just newer and cuter droids you could kill R2? I'm, I'm not voting for R2. I'm voting for C-3PO, but. You're voting for the hot young droids over the one that you've known and loved? It's fresh. So presidential. Wow. I'm, I'm saying that that'd be a big shake up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could do the whole thing, even what they just did at the Mandalorian, bring him back in the end. Like, he's fine. They already did that once, though. I wonder what the last shot is. Is it going to be, like, the cast shot? Like, they're all there celebrating some sort of big win? General Hux has to die, right? Yeah, he's disposable. He's greasy and weird. And then, what about, uh, aren't they bringing back Phasma? I don't think so. She, I don't think, she. if she is, it's a surprise. Uh-oh. I think she's supposed to be dead. Yeah. I don't know. I've been thinking about that. Like, how? Like, what's the final image? Because, and I saw this going around, a couple people did it on Twitter where um, they were putting it up as, I don't know where it originated, but doing Dr. Manhattan and Dr. Manhattan talked to like, whatever the months were. He's like, it's 1983 and I'm seeing the final Star Wars movie. It is 2005 and I'm about to go see the final Star Wars movie. It's 2019 and I'm about to go see the final Star Wars movie. It's a good joke. It is a good joke. I don't know. I was thinking about that. I don't know. Because I mean, 
Jedi. We did the Force Ghosts, but then we cut over to the main group. With Billy D. Williams clapping on the background as everyone stands there stiff as a board. Yes. <laughs> well, he's really into whatever that song was. Dub Dub. It, it used to be something different. It was Dub Dub was the name of the song. It's been too long. Yeah. And then Revenge of the Sith was Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru yeah, with the, the Tatooine. See, I like that was a fine final shot, I thought. Well, now it's a third of the way through shot. Yes. I don't know. What is a satisfying final shot? Maybe it, it, maybe it's something on Tatooine. My problem is, is I think I've probably seen it, so I'm really having trouble making an informed opinion. Uh, not in, but I, I, like I said, I've seen two spoilers. Did not hunt them out. Some jackass just posted them onto Twitter and I saw them. Wasn't intentional, so I feel like I've seen it. So I don't. I, it might not be what I saw, but I feel, I don't know if there's a good chance. Oh, uh, well. So I'm having trouble with that one, Okay, <laughs> to be honest, because I think I might have seen it. All right. Well, I appreciate you not saying. I don't want to ruin it for people. Atta boy. All right. Well, we'll have plenty to talk about next week. Yeah, Star Wars. It's going to be all Star Wars. Also, because it's Christmas next week, we're not going to, we're, we're going to meet earlier, so we'll have less to do than we normally do, but that's fine. And that'll be the last show of the year. Yeah, because then we're going to take uh, the week of New Year's off. So yeah, one more show this year. Wow. And then we're going to do our famous every year show where we look ahead to the future. <laughs> that just, was a terrible, terrible, just terrible kidding. show. Just kidding. Did we ever I'm, predict anything that really happened? I don't remember. Probably not. <laughs> I'm not going back. No. I'll tell you that. No. All right. Well, if you enjoyed the show, go to patreon.com slash editors note comics. A dollar a month gets you this show a whole day early. Plus, you also get spoiler and spoiler free reviews of Buffy, Angel, and Firefly. Those are Patreon exclusive podcasts here on the Editor's Note Podcast Comic Network. Yeah. I just came up with that on the own, my, my own right there. Yeah, no. Follow me onesie. Yeah. Right out of this basement. Yes, there we go. Plus, you can also visit Zach at the store, 210 Water Street in Hollowell. Uh, not open on Christmas Eve. Uh, I don't think so. I think I'm going to take Christmas Eve off. So, not open on Christmas Eve or Christmas, and I'm guessing open on New Year's Eve. Uh, don't know well we'll talk about that when we get closer to that I haven't decided there you go but not open uh but you're open right up uh, uh i think there's a i think the celtics are playing that day i think i probably just i'd rather watch the game than go to work well there you go enjoy the little <laughs> vacation so get your last minute uh comic book shopping done because the store will be open the 23rd but not the 24th you'll also visit them online editorsnotecomics.com email instagram facebook twitter and so on and so forth. Then you have a Twitter. I do at Junior Rich, and I got retweeted today by somebody famous. Who retweeted you? Lil John. Weird. Yeah. How? Why? That's a weird one. Oh, I tweeted out about the. Uh, he made a song last year with the Kool Aid Man. All I want for Christmas. Oh, I remember that. And so I just tweeted about it today, like, let's not forget this gem. And Lil John retweeted it. <laughs> Good for him. And by Lil John retweeted it, I'm. 110% certain that his social media handler t- retweeted it. <laughs> Good for him. But you know yeah. what? It looks a lot 